The Asian American Pacific Islander Nurses Association of Nevada presents Healthy Mondays with Apina of Nevada. Start the week healthy and right with interesting conversations on living a healthy lifestyle. And now, your Healthy Mondays host, Dr. Mary Fay Axon Armstrong. Aloha! Good evening. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. In Ilocano, na imbag asardam. In Cebuano, maayong gabi. Thank you for tuning in to Healthy Mondays with a Pinot Nevada. I'm yours truly, Dr. Mary Faye Axon Armstrong, founding president of the Asian American Pacific Islander Nurse Association of Nevada and professor in nursing at Roseman University of Health Sciences College of Nursing. Um, so uh, here we are on Monday night, ever ready to share some important information to all of you out there. Maybe you are here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Maybe you are in Hawaii, or maybe in the Philippines, or maybe in California, New York City, or even in Canada, or even in Greece, Italy, and Africa, all over the world. You know, Asian American Pacific Islanders are all over the world. And uh, we want to thank you for watching us on PHLV Radio Facebook page, yay, hey, and also listening in iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio, and also Amazon TV. So um, I wanted to read to you something that I found on a uh, on, uh, website. John F. Kennedy once said, Our attitude towards immigration reflects our faith in the American ideal. The American ideal is to recognize the rich cultural diversity of our nation, and honor the contributions of all immigrants. The U.S. celebrates Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month each May through traditional and social media, in theaters, museum and parks, and various events are recognized to draw attention to Asian American and Pacific Islander culture. So I wanted to ask all of you out there listening to us tonight, why is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month important? I have three reasons that I can share with you that I found on the website. One, it honors immigrants. Asian American immigrants and Pacific Islanders contribute greatly to the U.S. economy. This is a time to recognize how they have strengthened our communities. Two, we learn about diversity. Events and activities give us a glimpse of Asian American and Pacific Islanders' rich culture. And third, it emphasizes racial equality. Celebrations like this keep the dialogue alive. So let me take you down the history of AAPI Heritage Month timeline. Let's kind of start here. The most recent um, information I have is 2016. Numbers keeps going up. According to the survey, 1.5 million Native Hawaiian and other Pacific Islanders live in the United States. 2012 timeline, Asian became the largest immigrant community. Asian surpassed Hispanics as the largest immigrant community. They are also the fastest growing. In 1992, it became a month-long celebration. That is the Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. You know who we have to thank for this. We have to, we have President George H. W. Bush to thank for making this official. And long time ago, in 1882, there is this Chinese Exclusion, Exclusion Act. As a result of growing anti-Chinese sentiment, this act banned Chinese citizens from entering the U.S. for 10 years. So you see, we have a long, we have a, come a long way. I am from an Asian ancestry. I was born and raised in Binoan Rizal, Philippines, and migrated with my family to Honolulu, Hawaii in 1977. I have experienced life as a Filipino American and thankful for the life I have here in the United States. I am a contributing U.S. citizen, and my heart, my mind, and values are assimilation of my upbringing in the Philippines and here in the U.S. to love others, no matter what race, ethnicity, 
age, gender, background, education, etc. they are from. So tonight, in celebration of the Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, I have a very special guest, my ate, Ate Marge. I am so excited and happy to be with her here at PHLB Radio, live here in person. Ate Marge, welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having <laughs> me this morning. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, also known as Marietta Gonzalez, um, she's the chairwoman of the Asian American Pacific Islanders Community Commission, Clark County Commission Chambers. So um, I wanted to give an opportunity to Adi Marji. Uh, please share about yourself to our listeners out there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, thank you. Magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. Ako si Marji Gonzalez. So on Facebook, I'm Marji Lorenta Gonzalez. Llorente is my middle name. <laughs> and I, and as, I've, as you've said, I'm currently the chair of the Asian American and Pacific Islanders Community Commission. This was uh, created a year and a half ago, and it's almost uh, the end of our term this year. And um, a proclamation was actually uh, given by uh, the uh, Clark County Board of Commissioners, and I have that with me right now. <laughs> And um, if, with your permission, may I read e even just the last portion uh, of, course. of it? Go okay. ahead, Atamari. So this proclamation says, um, Now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners for Clark County that the Board, through the passage of this resolution, that Clark County denounces intolerance, xenophobia, and anti-Asian sentiment and supports the AAPICC, which is our commission, in each efforts to combat intolerance, xenophobia, and anti-Asian sentiment. Number two, Clark County joins cities, counties, and states across the country in affirming its commitment to the safety and well-being of AAPIs and in combating hate crimes targeting AAPIs. Number three, Clark County will continue its efforts to protect residents and victims of hate crimes. And lastly, the fourth, Clark County calls upon all counties, cities, and local governments across Nevada and the United States to adopt similar commitments to reaffirm their solidarity with AAPIs and commit to combating hate. And wow. signed um, 6th day of April, 2021. Wow, thank so, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. A lot of people are really supporting the Asian community. Um, it behooves us not to mention about the uprising Asian hate crimes because mm -hmm. uh, it is really uh, the reality. I, I just can't believe, I mean, we had a five series of broadcasts uh, regarding this topic and we wanted it to be a peaceful outcry it's yeah. really not just uh to share but it's an outcry why is this happening in this modern world aren't we equal are aren't we already diverse i mean intermarriage um interracial marriages is very rampant it's very common so which means that we are all equal we are all the same and uh, I shared in the previous ones uh, at the Marge about my own experience. So, uh, but this is a celebration. So we have to yes. be happy. We have and to be positive. Yes, you know? and it is. Um, you know, it's good to at least let the people know that really our public officials are really uh, engaged in into this one. So dif the different uh, U.S. legislators and even. Uh, local um, local offices like like the county, you know, they are also, you know, showing their support for for the AAPI community on on this regard. You know, um, every now and then we get invited to either join a town hall um, or attend a council session wherein they would have a resolution like this. So it's very good that uh, you know they are showing uh, all the support for the community, and I would say also that um, one reason too uh, that we get noticed or, or we get this support is because we are eleven to or twelve percent, you know, of the uh, population 
uh, here. I'm talking of here in, in Nevada. And so it's, we're not small. We're not a small group. We are a big group. And especially our uh, community, the Filipino community, we are 70% of the entire uh, Asian community. So um, we are actually a loud voice um, now uh, here. And we are in different fields, especially in healthcare. Uh, could you imagine if one day, let's say, the Asian, Asian healthcare workers will stop working just for one day? How many, how many patients will be losing a healthcare worker, somebody taking care of them? You know, the nurses, the caregivers, you know? If we um, actually go back to the Philippines, you know, because they say, go back to where you came from. So, okay, let's go back to where we came from. We'll see how it would work out. You yeah. Because we are very, just like I mentioned, we are a contributing uh, community to the society. Mm -hmm. so. And a lot in many different fields, mm -hmm. not just in healthcare, like even in the field of law, you know, <laughs> we have so many um, uh, so many uh, uh, lawyers who are who are Asians too, even even in the in the uh, the casinos, the restaurants, in the tourism industry. Yeah. There's a lot of us in there. So yeah. could you imagine if we all go home, what will happen? There's, there will be such a big vacuum that will be, <laughs> you know. Everything will cease. Like yeah. uh, the operation will stop, and they would have to close down. And uh -huh. I guess you know it's good to just kind of celebrate and uh, look into the reality of the value of the Asian population, the Asian American and Pacific Islander population. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to go back to um, uh, the uh, commission, and you mentioned about that they really support and they are engaged in supporting the Asian community, the Asian American Pacific Islander community. I know that um, when you just say it, it's a lip service, but how... Can you give us some example how they take that lip service to actual action service? Okay. When we were created, um, okay, our commission is composed of 15 of different ethnicities. So, uh, but the Filipinos, uh, Filipino community is represented by four because since we are the largest uh, in, the Asian, in the Asian population here, so four at least are Filipinos and the rest are uh, Pacific Islander, Afghan American, A Asian Indians, uh, Korean American, Japanese American. So, so we ha we are really of different ethnicities, and it's re it really feels good that you know they try their best to so that uh, we could have a good cross section uh, of the um, the multi ethnic uh, communities that we have here, and so we work. Um, based on the uh, duties that we, you know, we got sworn into, and we have three things to do. One is do uh, an, a an AAPI report, which we have already done. So we have submitted that to the board, and they have accepted it. And we, we, we did uh, a research, and we did recommendations in in the in the report. They fully accepted it with no question. The second thing that we need to do is a whole a resource conference, and that is happening soon. Uh, the resource conference scheduled on May 21. So we hope to be able to tell everyone what resources are available, you know, for the AAPI community, not only in the county, but also in the cities. You know, locally, there's a lot of resources available for us. So we will have that, uh, that grand resource conference, and that's happening on, on May 21. And um, oh, we have with the participation of uh, not just the government agencies, but also of the different community resource organizations and community engagement organizations. The difference is one is really providing different resources to people, and the other one is promoting culture and community. Now, the third one that we, we will be doing is a feasibility study, and that is the third one, a third and last one that we should be able to do before, uh, before our term ends, which is the feasibility study 
of, a, of an AAPI Culture and Resource Center. So that is that is actually the, the ultimate goal of this. So so what we are actually working on from starting from the research work all the way to the resource conference to the to the um, feasibility study is hopefully that we have a home, you know, a big home, so that um, somebody who will be needing something, you know, uh, needing a resource, they know where to go. There is a common place to go. Like a center. Yes, like a cultural a center. center. Yes, oh. uh, yes. And then, um, you know, because right now, let's say, um, there, there was one time wherein I helped a... Um, I helped uh, a, a Chinese uh, man who was a victim of uh, labor trafficking. Mm -hmm. to, to help him, I had to accompany him to different places, to different offices, you know, like w the benefits or, you know, the, so the welfare office. And, and so could you imagine if, we, you, if there is a center that mm -hmm. we just go to one place? And everything will be in there, instead of going to many different places to help one person. Like a comprehensive cultural center. Yes, yes. So helping uh, the immigrants or whoever needs help to navigate the process, because yes. it's a process getting your passport or mm -hmm. even uh, those who wanted to be U.S. citizens. Yes. I remember, um, and I'm going to share a little bit, when we first uh, partnered with Asian Community Development Council, we had a health fair and a citizenship day. And the citizenship day is we have uh, volunteer lawyers who try to clear the criminal records, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Because if you have a criminal criminal record, you cannot apply for citizenship. Mm -hmm. You have to clear your, like, as simple as, like, a ticket, like a traffic ticket mm -hmm. or or parking ticket yeah, or that you any forgot. Yeah, yeah, any misdemeanor. And you have to clear it first before you can apply for citizenship. Mm -hmm. So um, th those kind of things. I am excited. Yeah, at could you imagine uh, instead of uh, going to all these different organizations who provide these resources, they could have a representative in that center and also uh, uh, people there or staff that actually speaks different languages. Mm -hmm. uh, because that is also another another impediment. It's like uh, when we went, uh, as I said, I, I helped this uh, Chinese labor traffic victim, and nobody speaks Chinese. Nobody s speaks his language uh, where we went to, uh, you know, that office. So I actually just had to be the one to talk to the to the employee. And tell the story, tell the whole thing, and explain what he was what he was needing that time. So, could you imagine a center wherein there is always a translator, you know, uh, of whatever language that's available? Yeah, uh -huh. like they have in the hospital. It may not be like a person face to face, mm -hmm. but they have like a, a monitor kind of TV, mm -hmm. and you dial it, and then there's someone who comes up. What kind of language do yes. you need? And then yes. they will have someone immediately yes. right there to speak to the person or make an appointment like, okay, we don't have anyone right now available, and then maybe we can make an appointment. Uh -huh. so, and not yeah. only for resources. Um, you know, like even in the past, you know, what we do, we go to different hotels to use their ballrooms, to use their function rooms, mm -hmm. meeting rooms, or conference rooms. Mm -hmm. We go to, you know, the most popular ones, of course, Gold Coast, uh, Orleans, you know. Mm -hmm. And could you imagine if we already have that center where we could hold our events there? Uh, so um, not only do we uh, are able to do these events, but we're actually uniting the different communities because we, we are in one place. Mm -hmm. That would also even help unite you know, the very diverse uh, AAPI community. I so. need to connect you with my brother. Uh, it's uh, in Hawaii. We have a Filipino community center. Yes, I've and, heard uh, about that. Yes, uh, uh -huh. Edmund Axon is one of my brothers, and he's the chair, board, uh, chair for the board of directors there, and they are thriving. And so this, the Filipino community center is actually a big center 
right there in Waipahu. Uh-huh. And so Waipahu, <laughs> Hawaii is where a lot of Filipinos are. And they use this center for uh, exactly what you are describing. They have, uh, they have classes for uh, Filipino nurses who are having a hard time passing their mm-hmm. national board mm-hmm. exam for nursing. They also have different classes for uh, carpenters you wanted to be carpenters and you know any any uh any of those uh skills that mm-hmm. they could learn so then they can get a job and support their families yeah the trade skills yes and the mm-hmm. ballroom is also used for parties and you know filipinos oh, uh, asians <laughs> pacific islanders we love parties and so it's like a it's like a uh they will you know they will have they will rent the uh, the ballroom mm-hmm. so it's an income thing where mm-hmm. it goes back to the community mm-hmm. Um, so that would be great, Atimar, yeah. if they have so one. So that like is that the here. ultimate dream, uh, yes. the ultimate goal. So yes. um, hopefully with the, this first commission, we are able to deliver, and I know we can definitely deliver, um, what we were sworn in for. So is that one of your records? Because I was reading the three things. You said one is um, the AAPI uh, report. Commission, you do the report, and the report includes research and recommendation. Uh-huh. So, can you is the uh, cultural center one of your recommendation? Yes, it's actually in it's actually in in, in there. Uh, okay. If if uh, the uh, the in the duties, it actually says cultural center, uh, but it it looks more like a, a resource and culture center. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I know that I, you know who's uh, Dorinda Burnett, right? Oh yes, she's. Yes, uh, she's I guess she told me that she's now um, immediate past president for the Las Vegas uh, Hawaiian, Hawaiian Civic Club. Civic Club. So um, I know that. Um, I think it's important to share in our community out there uh, the cultures. You know, the Asian American and then the Pacific Islanders. If you haven't heard about Hoolaulea, then you're missing out a lot. Uh-huh. It's kind of like uh, the first time I. I uh, participated in the Taste of Honolulu. You know, they would have different restaurants um, selling their um, their food right there, like a- And they're three that? days, Friday, three days? Saturday, Sunday. Wow. The whole Laulea. Yes. Yeah, because I've, I've always been, uh, you know, a part of that, you know, as we're always there, you know, yeah. participating. And Maybe for those who days. doesn't know, yeah, for those who doesn't know what it is, Ate March, can you describe to them what happens in a Ho'olaulea? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's the biggest Hawaiian cultural event, uh, actually, in Henderson. Um, and could you imagine, like, a fair with all the different arts and crafts of the Pacific Islanders the culture, they have at least three stages, you know? So there's a main stage, and then there's a side stage, and there's another stage, like, inside the, you know, the inside the convention uh, building. And sometimes there's even a fourth stage somewhere in another lawn, you know? So They're performing because, the, you know, yes. Pacific Islander uh, culture is very rich. You know, they, you have your Tongans, you have your... Samoa and the native Hawaiians. Yeah, not only that, they invite also others, you know, because yes. they also um, uh, they also have uh, invite other culture to to perform uh, there. So it's really um, it's a huge event, and it's Dorinda's really d- did a great job yes. in handling, uh, you know, all those that that annual event. Yeah, I was just texting her because ordering a. A graduation graduation lay for my son. <laughs> she makes lay, and also don't forget about the food. <laughs> oh yes! Oh my the goodness! Food. Yes, <laughs> yeah. you know Dorinda is also in our commission, so she represents the the Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islanders in in the AAPI Commission of Clark County. Yeah. But um, at Marge, I wanted to um, read something about to our listeners out there. The four things to know about the Asian American Pacific Islanders. The Chinese, according to the research that I did, the Chinese arrived first. Chinese immigrants came in the mid-19th century to work on the railroads and gold mines. And then it says here, you know when I say aloha, is not just a simple hello. It's the spirit of aloha is a law. 
uh, that all Hawaiians, including tourists, must follow and respect by emoting good feelings for others. So when I say aloha, I'm not just saying hello. I'm trying to evoke some good feelings in you. <laughs> so um, the next one is new home states. Uh, it mentioned that more than half of all Pacific Islanders are in two states. That, that's uh, Hawaii and California. And lastly, the largest Asian American population. Hawaii has the largest Asian American population. Um, I don't know when this was taken, this statistics, but nearly 800,000. And I know, after March, you mentioned that the Filipino population is the largest Asian population here in Nevada. Yes, and yes. it's because also that you mentioned this, the, uh, uh, Hawaii and you mentioned California. Actually, they are coming here to Nevada, especially here in Clark County, because I used to work um, for the Homeland Security, and I have co-workers. I used to have co-workers were in, they tell me, they told me that they come from Hawaii, Guam. Me. <laughs> <laughs> and California, the three <laughs> places. And... Yes, they have large, uh, really, all these three places have a really, uh, you know, big uh, AAPA population. But because they are moving to here, now you could imagine how big the population of the AAPIs are here now. Yeah. Um, the thing is also, uh, one thing good about it, they come here as homeowners. Most of them are coming yes, here as homeowners. <laughs> and so they... They really a big boost to the Nevada economy. Yes. So they work. They work for the tourism industry. They work in the healthcare industry. You know, and they they actually uh, help in you know help a lot in in boosting the economy of Nevada. See, um, in, we, this is time for celebration. You know, sometimes we take it for granted that we are valued, and. Uh, now they're they are paying attention to us. Uh, they're trying to engage with us. They try. They are now trying to reach out to us and trying to get to know us. Mm -hmm. And what uh, what do we want? You know. Okay. So take that opportunity, uh, Asian American Pacific Islander community. Take that opportunity. Um, so um, I'm looking at the time at <coughs> the march. Uh, well, you know, how do we? And then again, I I did some research again. Um, how do you observe the Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month? So I looked up, they have three suggestions here. And I know I mentioned like, you don't forget food because <laughs> food yeah. is very important. Yes. So the suggestion here is how you would celebrate May uh, as the AAPI Heritage Month. One is cook a traditional <laughs> recipe. So embark on a cultural culinary journey in your kitchen. Mm -hmm. So begin with fresh ingredients because we love fresh vegetables, right? Uh -huh. And serve up some Asian or Hawaiian dishes for your friends and family. Mm -hmm. The second one is join the social media celebrations. There's a lot out a lot. there. Uh -huh. And then um, you don't have to be an Asian American or Pacific Island there to join the fun on social media. Everybody is included. We are diverse. We are inclusive. And maybe you have a friend or neighbor who is one, so tag or follow them. You know, <laughs> the pancit and the lumpia <laughs> and the chicken adobo, the pork adobo. You don't want to miss it. Um, and the last one is travel back to your roots. Connect with relatives and, and trace your genealogy. Go and visit the Philippines. Uh, don't forget to record your experiences in a mem memoir and make your family tree if you haven't done that. It's something the next generation can trust you, right? Although not at the moment, though, because of the pandemic. Oh, we yes, will yes, you being, have to observe. Yeah, be in quarantine for yes. a while. <laughs> yeah, thank you for uh, pointing that out. But, you know, when we have the opportunity, yes. go and visit, right? Yes, and there's a lot of places to visit that's really beautiful if you notice if um if you know if you are uh, watching vloggers okay uh like on youtube you see a lot of non-filipinos actually you know focusing on the philippines and they get a lot of viewers so imagine non-filipinos doing 
vlogs were in the Philippines is their setting and they get a lot of viewers and then sometimes you know, just like me although I grew up you know in I was born and grew up in the Philippines and I came I was already you know an adult a big adult <laughs> when I came <laughs> here I haven't visited a lot of places and watching these uh, foreign vloggers I'm actually, oh my goodness. Makes you want to go. Yes, I, <laughs> I haven't have been to, to Baguio. <laughs> Ate Marge, I haven't been to Baguio. Oh, really? Oh, wow. I haven't been to uh, Boracay. <laughs> so there's so many things that I haven't been. The last time I went, last January 2020, I went to Sambuanga because oh, my brother okay, is there. Okay. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I got to eat. Uh, was that karacha? The, those big the karacha. Uh, crabs. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. So um, even. Among Filipinos who I haven't been to, because Philippines is a big country, you know, uh -huh. beautiful country. Uh -huh. So you're right about the bloggers. There's the Australian guy. There was one from uh, London. From Canada. Canada, uh -huh. yes. So, wow, yeah. we can go on and on, Ate March. Time flies when we're having fun. <laughs> do, you, do you have any, um, any words of wisdom to share to our listeners out there, Asian American, Pacific Islanders, and even though you're not Asian American or Pacific Islanders, uh, what, what kind of, do you have any words of wisdom for them? Actually, uh, this is more of like, um, some kind of an appeal, okay? AAPIs, there's a lot of us here we are actually a loud voice. Speak up. There's a lot of Asians who are just so quiet and they would rather just stay home and not be engaged on anything as long as they eat three times a day, they see their family, uh, their husband, wife, children, and that's already okay. Um, but realize that everything that you need you know it involves voicing out you know if let's say there is something that you see that it has that is not right in let's say in the education system or in the healthcare system voice it out because no change will happen if we just remain quiet so going to that how do we make a loud voice vote register and vote because there's still a lot of AAPIs out there who are already uh, US citizens but they didn't even they don't even register uh, to, uh, they are not even registered voters the only way to make a loud voice is vote you know, exercise, your, exercise your rights yes yes, yes. if they say wow this AAPIs is really a huge number of votes you know we will listen to whatever they say they need, you know, and 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 you see it, you see it in yes. uh, in others like let's say the Hispanic community, they listen to them because they're loud and they say what they want, they what they need. So we can also do it, you know. We can also make that loud voice and for us to be heard, so that our needs will be provided. If we need improvements on anything, even even just street lights or the roads or you know speak up and yes. the, the best way to speak up register to and, vote and, and vote, vote. <laughs> yes. well, yeah, thank regardless you, of you know regardless of political parties it's you know they count you as one person one vote regardless of who you vote for yes. well there you have it thank you Ate Marge. thank you for agreeing to be our uh, guest tonight lots of information coming mm -hmm. from the um, Clark County Commissioner, and um, I am sure that you know your your group had done a lot of work already, the research, and you're setting the foundation. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to uh, hear more about it and update. And uh, also, once again, PHLP Radio, Johan, uh, thank you for your partnership. And uh, I guess uh, I'm trying to think what else I forgot. I know at the March, um, I invited at the March for our town hall meeting at uh, Rosemary University, we're having an open forum to address the, uh, the Asian hate crimes. We mm -hmm. have lots of, uh, we have a big population of Asian population, um, not, not even at Rosemary, other universities too, they do. 
So it's just an opportunity for us to listen and bring some healing and also bring some community resources. And may I also add to that um, because um, we've done our part as uh, not just as community leaders, but as, as other members of the community also, uh, you know, came together and voiced out, you know, uh, their sentiments about this. But we also would like to appeal to the big influencers you know, hopefully, just like uh, just like the African American community, when they uh, want to speak up, mm-hmm. would you, uh, you know, their superstars in sports, in music, in the entertainment industry are all out there for them too. So hopefully, our big names too <laughs> in these different industries, the influencers that we're in, they will also come up because we have many popular Asians. Our celebrities, are, yeah. Oh yes, many celebrities, uh, Asian celebrities. We, we actually just uh, two Asians just won in the Oscars, you know. So it that could have been a big opportunity, just like uh, when I think it was Beyonce, somebody else uh, during the during the Super Bowl, you know, did a performance and she made a statement, you know. She took uh, advantage of that opportunity when the whole world is watching mm-hmm. and make a statement. So hopefully they will also join us, these uh, uh, AAPI celebrities, the influencers, uh, you, would, you know, who, who a lot of millions, uh, you know, people follow and watch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hope they so, join us too. Yeah, so capture the audience in, a, in really a versatile way. So we're all really trying to capture our audience here at PHLB Radio. So thank you again, Atamarge. Thank you, PHLB Radio. And... Uh, Please continue to uh, celebrate uh, May 2021. So with having said that, thank you to our listeners for tuning in tonight and continuing to watch us. Remember, every Monday is a healthy Monday. Aloha. The Asian American Pacific Islander Nurses Association of Nevada has just brought you Healthy Mondays with Apina of Nevada. Filipino radio experience in Las Vegas, PHLV Radio.